Hello everyone and welcome to the Western Governors University and Nurses on Boards Coalition webinar. My name is Molly Nordgren and I'm the Associate Dean of Undergraduate Nursing for the College of Health Professions at WGU. I'm so excited that you're joining us as we discuss bringing our unique perspectives as nurses into board service. Today, we will learn about the ins and outs of serving on multiple boards and how to get involved through the Nurses on Boards Coalition. Joining me today is Kim Harper from the Nurses on Boards Coalition, also known as NOBC. WGU is proud to be a founding sponsor of NOBC, which works to build healthier communities through the service of nurses on corporate, health-related, and other types of boards. During today's webinar, we will hear from Carrie Moody, who is currently serving as a nurse on three different boards. She will tell us about her experience, how she got started in board service, and how she manages serving on multiple boards while also working, going to school, and balancing time with her family. After we hear about Carrie's board service experience, we will then hear from Kim at NOBC, who will tell us more about NOBC, its mission, and how you can get involved. And lastly, we will open a Q&A portion at the end of the webinar for you to ask us questions. Throughout today's discussion, if you have questions, I invite you to type them into the chat box located in the bottom right corner of your screen. We will be answering questions at the end of the webinar. Let's go ahead and get started because we have lots of great information to cover. Thank you so much for joining us today, Carrie. We are so thrilled to ha have time to sit down with you and learn more about the experiences that you've had serving on boards. Our objective today is uh, to really think about uh, those who are already serving on boards and how we can help them to develop tools and give them the information necessary to continue their service and persist in the, ser in the service for years to come. Um, you not only attend WGU, uh, but you're serving on more than one type of board, and I know that you have a long history of board service. So let's start there a little bit. How long have you been serving on boards? Well, I would say my board service started um, when my kids were little, so about 10 years. Um, my first board started um, out of desperation. I had little kids. I joined a babysitting co-op, and um, they require every six months to rotate moms doing either president, vice president, or um, uh, the secretary. So that's kind of where it started probably about 10 years ago. That's great. And uh, tell us what boards you're, you're serving on right now. Um, currently, I'm serving on my daughter's synchronized swimming uh, board. Uh, I've been doing that for about three years um, in different roles. My most recent one was um, as vice president. And then um, I am serving on a new uh, not-for-profit that's starting in the community um, that's uh, adoption-related for a company called One Less for One More. And then just recently, my newest board um, is for NCC, a National Certification Corporation, and um, they help certify nurses um, to get their certification in women's health and neonatal certifications. That's great. And in what capacity do you serve for NCC? Um, I am just on the board of directors, so I think my title is director. That's great. And what about one for one? One less for one more, I'm the secretary. Oh, that's amazing. And you said that one's more of a startup, correct? Yes. Um, the way I got involved with that um, was on our neighborhood community um, board. Um, a gentleman had reached out and said that he has a heart for adoption. Um, he was going to start a um, adoption um, organization, of not-for-profit, and asked um, if anybody else had a heart for adoption. Well, my husband and I have adopted um, a, a then 16-year-old through foster care. And she's now 24, but um, I was like, "Well, I have we have a heart for adoption." So I sent him an email, and we ended up meeting up at the local coffee shop. And over the last year, we've been working on um, what does it look like, you know, to have this organization. You know, he he's put a lot more work into it because it is his ministry, but um, we've been able to contribute to it um, pretty significantly. That's great. So you're serving on multiple boards at one time. How do you kind of manage that? Well, luckily, 
for me because I also work part-time nights and uh, homeschool the kids but luckily for me they uh, don't meet that often um, you know so there's like uh, quarterly meetings um, annual meetings um, not a whole lot of work um, usually uh, to put into it. There is some prep time, especially for the NCC, um, some study time and some, you know, looking into the new changes of policies that needs to be done. But for the most part, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to be able to flex it into the schedule. That's great. Uh, what advice would you give nurses who are interested in expanding their board service? I would really just encourage someone to look for something they're interested in whether that be animals, start with something small, like I have a passion for animals, um, join the local organization that um, you know cares for animals and then get on the board. Um, I really, over the years, have built my confidence. Um, I've been a nurse for 19 years this June, and so um, it's, it's a, a privilege for me to be on the board for NCC. Um, I started that one actually, they actually reached out to me and offered me the position. Um, and that was because um, they had offered an opportunity um, to be on their um, content team. So I actually helped write questions for their exams. But that was, that was an email they sent out. They looked for volunteers. I was like, hey, that sounds like really fun. I think I could write questions for the exam. And so I had been on the um, low-risk neonatal content team for over a year, uh, actually about a year and a half before they reached out to me and was like, hey, we really think we would like to add you on the board of directors. And I was just like, what? You know, I mean, I'm a current student at WGU getting my bachelor's degree, so I'm an associate degree nurse. And when I went online to look to see who was on the board of directors, there was there was a lot of people that had a lot of initials after their names and it felt overwhelming and a part of me felt like um, I didn't have enough experience to be on the board but um, my first board meeting I realized that I just have different experience you know I have something different to offer and um, I was able to contribute and um, I just I thought it was really great yeah, I think it always feels good when you're asked to um, to serve in a, in a capacity that kind of stretches you. Um, I want to go back to the synchronized swimming. I think that's, that's really fascinating because when we talk about board service, it isn't just in healthcare related boards. We're really interested in, in nurses serving on all kinds of boards. Um, from your perspective with that and even the, um, you know, the adoption um, startup that you, you talked a little bit about, about what kind of perspective do you think you bring as a nurse that that maybe others wouldn't have well I think you know just being aware of like water safety um, these are a lot of young teenagers and um, so actually interestingly enough I found my education to be in um, you know puberty and uh, to be, you know, you can't swim in the water without taking care of, you know, uh, women things. And so I'm trying to be <laughs> respectful of these little teenage girls, but just being education, being able to educate them, not only my own daughter, but um, her swim teammates, you know, and, and how to um, take care of yourself as a woman and, and just not being afraid as a nurse to like put on my medical cap and, and um, you know, just educate and teach, and and uh, swim safety and all that has been a great uh, uh, contribution, I think. So that's really interesting. Thanks for sharing. What have you changed in your nursing practice based on what you've learned from board service? Um, I think it has encouraged me first and foremost to like look to get my education. Um, to advance my education, not be worried about my age, that I'm too old, or, um, you know, I just turned 40 this year, and so I'm getting my bachelor's degree. Um, being part of the NCC and seeing and being around, like, really educated people um, has even made me start thinking about getting my master's degree and um, just furthering myself and uh, continuing to gain knowledge and to grow in my own practice um, and it's built up my confidence in a way that um, I just didn't have several years ago. 
I think it's interesting you bring up confidence because I've heard that uh, from from a lot of people who've served on boards that it really helps them develop their leadership skills and to feel more confident in in themselves and their and their abilities. If someone is considering board service but just really doesn't know how to get started and where to even look for opportunities, what would you encourage them to do? I think. Again, just like looking to what you're interested in. What are your kids doing, the sports, like part being part of the synchronized swimming board? Um, where do you want to have your voice? You know, if it's something in your community that you're complaining about that's bothering you, well, hey, maybe you should look into seeing about getting in the neighborhood community board um, or a, a passion that you have. Um, look for volunteer opportunities, because in the case of NCC, I mean, I started out as a volunteer. And so and then that, um, I, I did a good job in that, and then they reached out to, to be aboard. But I think then, as a volunteer um, and being around the people of NCC, um, I might have even have applied for the board position in a couple years. Um, and so I think volunteering um, in things that you're interested in, um, and it can start small. I mean, if you need the babysitting co-op or your kids' sports or you love animals or you know plants, um, just looking for organizations that you support, maybe, um, and uh, financially, and then seeing how you can become more involved and just reach out. Um, I think people are afraid of being on the boards, but what I've learned over the last 10 years is that, um, you know, we all have a voice and we all have an opinion. And, um, you know, oftentimes, my, I found that my opinion is very much different than everybody else. And I've had lots of people tell me like, wow, I'm really glad that you shared that. And so had I not been bold enough to do that, then, um, then what could have been lost? Yeah. I love that you talk about the voice. I think our profession, um, you know, in nursing and kind of that patient centered advocacy and, you know, speaking up and, you know, doing what's best for uh, individuals and clients and families kind of gives us a unique perspective there to, to really give uh, a unique, a, a unique stance in, yeah. in a board situation. So tell me about um, an experience that you've had in any of your board service, which is so great and longstanding that you're most proud of. Well, I would say that um, being on NCC, um, I was really nervous when I first um, went to the first board meeting. Um, you know, like I said, there was a lot of people there with a lot of initials, a lot more education than me. You know, I just thought I was just an associate degree nurse. But you know what I really found was that um, when I kind of got outside of my comfort zone and I you know, I contributed my thoughts, like I had a question about something that maybe I was unclear about, you know, actually there were other people in the room that were unclear. On, on my first board meeting, I was volunteered to help them redesign their um, mission and vision statement. Like, wow, like this is my first board meeting and you want me to help. Um, but I helped fill a gap of, of the neonatal part that they didn't have. They had a lot of women's services um, helping, but um, I was really proud that on my very first board meeting, they even thought to invite me and uh, that I was able to contribute and help with that. Um, when you talk about an organization, you know, that's as well known and that's been around for as long as they have to be able to help them redesign their mission statement. I was, I was pretty excited about that. That's exciting work. And you know that it goes on for a long time after your, your board service with them is complete. So you mentioned that board service made you want to go back to school and kind of advance your career. How has it helped you in your career? Um, not only has it made me more confident, a more confident nurse, um, but I think it's helped me in understanding the importance of um, evidence-based practice and research and um, just encouraging my coworkers to further their education. I have several coworkers that are attending WGU with me. And so just being like, hey, you should get your certification 
or you should get your bachelor's degree, or I have a nurse that's a coworker that is interested in getting her master's degree, but she's a little nervous about it. And just being like, you should do that. And just really encouraging them. Um, you know, as my experience is going through school um, and learning so much. And, you know, I just finished biochem. Good grief, that was a difficult class. But um, I, my whole mind thinks differently about cells now and how <laughs> glucose works. And so um, I just really encourage people to get their education. I think it makes them better, better nurses and makes them better um, in their practice. And um, I think that's how it's helped contribute. That's great. So I, I really appreciate your time and hearing your amazing story. This has been so informative for me and, and I, I can feel and see the passion that you have for this work. And, and thank you for being ex an example to, to nurses. Uh, in closing, is there any piece of advice that you could offer to those who may not be considering board service, who, who those who really haven't thought about it being something that they were interested in, why would they want to do this? Um, I would just really encourage them not to be afraid um, and just to find something that they're passionate. It doesn't have to be a big national organization. Find something that they love and that they're passionate about, that they want to contribute their opinion for and start there. And um, I think that's where the spark starts, you know, and something that's interesting to you or something that benefits you or your community or, or your passions or ideas. And I just think that starting small and um, just getting out there and joining um, something that you're interested in. Um, and then from there, you can kind of um, work your way up and, and something else will come up or something at work or you can be on a board or um, a certification that you have. Or, you know, you might find an email on the community board asking to be part of an adoption um, board, you know, whatever it is. Um, I just really encourage people to not be afraid um, to speak up um, for something that's important for them. Great. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you all enjoyed learning about Carrie's experience. Her passion for service is contagious. Now we will hear from Kim at NOBC. If you missed the first webinar, this will be a quick recap to learn more about how to get involved and take our next steps in board service. With nearly 40 years of healthcare experience, Kim currently serves as the Chief Executive Officer of the Indiana Center for Nursing. Kim also serves as Chair of the Board of Directors of the National Nurses on Boards Coalition which unites over 25 national nursing organizations towards a goal of improving the health care of our nation through the service of 10,000 nurses on boards by 2020. Well, good morning, everyone. I am delighted to have the opportunity to be with you this morning, and thank you so much, Molly, for the lovely introduction. I can tell you that the Nurses on Boards Coalition is an amazing organization, and it's an initiative that has just become rampant across the United States and actually globally over the last few years. And it's truly my honor to serve as the chairman of the board of directors of the Nurses on Boards Coalition. So just to kind of begin the story and have everybody understand how it came about, I know that you're all very familiar with the Future of Nursing Leading Change Advancing Health book that came out about 10 years ago from the Institute of Medicine, now the Academies of Medicine. And in that book, there were recommendations that were made. You know, it was a, just a landmark um, report about how nursing could actually improve healthcare through specific recommendations, that if nursing followed those recommendations, that positive improvements would be made. One of those recommendations was actually IOM recommendation number seven, and it was to prepare and enable nurses to lead change and to advance health. And with that, you can see on the slide, it was defined further as nurses and nursing educational programs and associations should prepare the nursing workforce to assume leadership positions across all levels, while in at the same time, public, private, and governmental healthcare decision makers should ensure that leadership positions are available to and filled by nurses. So when we were thinking about how we could take that forward to turn it into something larger, which we did with all of the recommendations um, from the Institute of Medicine report back then, it was really felt strongly that 
one way of doing that was to bring the nursing voice to the tables where decisions are being made for healthcare all over America. And so at that point in time, the Center to Champion Nursing in America brought together individuals that were leaders of nursing organizations. And that particular um, event that first day was held and um, hosted by Susan Hassmiller from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and Susan Reinhardt from the um, Center to Champion Nursing in America, which is housed at AARP. And on that first day, 21 nursing leaders were brought into Washington, D.C. to talk about this and to really have a conversation as to how could we potentially work together to truly make a difference. And I was honored to be there at that very first meeting. At that point in time, I was the current at that time, president of the National Forum of State Nursing Workforce Centers, which was one of the 21 organizations that was brought together by Sue and Susan to have this conversation. And these organizations were all the big nursing organizations that you would expect, um, the ANA, the American Organization of Nurse Executives then, leaders now, um, the NLN, AAC, and Sigma, you know, all, all the big various organizations, and also the minority representation of the minority nurses associations. And so we were all there for a full day. And, you know, we had these great conversations about knowing that we as presidents of the board, or sometimes the people who were there were the paid staff, the executive director of the organization, we, ha we had this conversation about we all have these strategic plans and we all have 50 things that we're all doing. But could we add one more thing? And if we were able to add that one more thing, what could it look like? And could we actually work together in a way that nursing in our profession had never done to bring one specific organized effort to the forefront? And that being to get the nurse's voice on boards where decisions are being made regarding health care. And so those groups were sent back to um, all, each one of us as representatives to our boards and our groups and the respective nursing organizations. And we talked about, you know, is this something our organization would be interested in doing? And then we were brought back again um, in the summer, um, early summer, had a further discussion. And then we started talking about what would it look like? You know, what would we call it? You know, what would it be? Um, an organization of its own? What would it be a coalition, which is what we settled on, that it should just be a coalition at that point in time, which it, it remains a coalition, but a very organized one at this point in time. And then in the fall, we came back again with a strategic plan, so to speak. A steering committee had been um, selected during that summer meeting who were charged with putting together a strategic plan, and that was brought back in um, the early fall. And at that point, we all agreed to that plan. We took it back to our respective organizations for votes that says who's in, who's out. And then at that point in time, we all came back together um, in November of 2014. Every single one of those original 21 members said we're in and we want to be involved in this. And at that point, we launched the Nurses on Boards Coalition. Again, that was in 2014. And I can tell you since that time, we have grown by leaps and bounds. Um, as we move into um, the current state of Nurses on Boards, I can tell you that our mission has never changed. The Nurses on Boards um, Coalition mission is to improve the health of communities and the nation through the service of nurses on boards and other governing bodies. That's what it's all about. That's what we strive for. Everything that we do at the Nurses on Boards Coalition is toward this goal. And the reason for that is that we believe that nurses bring a unique set of skills to the table. It's not that the other set of skills that other individuals bring are not important, but it is important that nurses are at the table with the skills that we bring. And it's interesting that in many times and for almost every situation, the competencies that board governance organizations are looking for in a successful board member are also the competencies that are possessed by nurses. So it's a perfect match. And it's interesting that within our healthcare systems across the nation, our hospital and healthcare systems, we have data from the American Hospital Association that shows that literally less than 5% of the health and hospital um, organizations across our country have a nurse on their board with a vote. Now that doesn't mean that the chief nursing officer, or the chief nursing executive is not in that room because he or she usually almost always is, and able to uh, provide information and to provide support, to provide data. However, in most instances, the nurse 
does not have a vote on that board. And we do know that less than 5% of the boards across America do have a nurse with a voice, with a vote on that board. Interestingly, on the other hand, physicians represent a 100% of organizations such as hospital health systems with a physician with a vote. So it's not that we think in any way that physician's voice is not important. It absolutely is. But we also think and believe with all of our hearts that nurses bring a set of skills to the table that nobody else really brings. You know, many organizational boards are made up of bankers, you know, and um, financial people, business people, um, philanthropists, you know, in an organization or in um, the community in which they serve. Um, and they all bring an excellent acumen, you know, of skills to the table, but none of those individuals bring the same set of skills that a nurse would bring. So in moving forward with our mission, you know, we believed that there were some strategies that we probably need to undertake in order to get to this goal, with our goal always being to improve health. And one of those big strategies was that we felt that it would be great if we could have 10,000 seats filled by nurses on boards and commissions um, across our country by 2020. It's a lofty goal, you know, and it, and it started slowly because we kind of had to get the word out and we had to build the momentum. And I can tell you that the momentum has been built and it is moving rapidly now and we're excited about that. Currently, we can tell you that, and as this slide share shows, and this was when this data was given to create this PowerPoint presentation, at that point, we were 6,056 board seats filled by nurses, and today, we are at 6,216, so just in a week or so, that has changed that drastically. You know, every time we go out and talk about this, we get more nurses like all of you excited about this work. And, and we do know that there are so many, many nurses in America who are currently already serving on boards, but we don't know it. They have not been entered into the database yet. So that's one of our big charges and one of our real uh, requests from all of you today to do that. And we'll talk about it a little bit more in a little bit. And we also know that over 10,000 nurses in America want to serve on a board, but they don't currently do that. We also know that for over 14,000 nurses are in our Nurses on Boards database today, and we can communicate with them on a regular basis. And it's all about communicating, getting people to understand the need, to understand the ability to achieve great things if we all work together. But each individual nurse has a voice at some table in this country. And if we can get the right nurse to the right table at the right time, we're gonna make a difference in healthcare across our country. If we talk about the initiatives um, of our Nurses on Boards Coalition, um, we have a, a set of strategic imperatives. And again, each one of these strategic imperatives that were um, created by our board of directors and the members of our organization all work together to serve the mission. And again, reminding everyone that our mission is to improve the health of the communities and the nation through the service of nurses on boards and commissions and appointments. So the first one of our strategic imperatives is to facilitate board placements. You know, obviously it, it takes a little help sometimes to get the right nurse on the right board at the right time. And so we have a work group that's very devoted to working on facilitating board placements. We have to identify them. You know, where are board opportunities? And so we're networking with individuals all across the country and actually internationally a bit now to find board opportunities. That happens at the national level and at the state level and on the local levels. You know, within my particular state, I'm from Indiana and I know we have a Western governors at in Indiana and we love it and we work, I work very closely with it. I love the colleagues that I have here in Indiana. And in Indiana, what we have done is we have replicated the Nurses on Boards Coalition at the state level. And so it's exciting to know that, you know, we have actually, we just calculated it yesterday, we have a goal, we had set a goal. Every state was given a goal as to how many nurses in their state it would take if we all got to our goal, we'd be at the 10,000. And I can, I'm proud to say that Indiana, as of yesterday, was at a 192% of our goal. So we've almost doubled our goal in Indiana. And the way that we've done that is that we have people that are involved all over our state. 
we have replicated the Nurses on Boards Coalition. So today we have 29 national nursing organizations and groups as members at the national level of Nurses on Boards. And we have invited the state or chapter affiliate chapter within the state of Indiana to also participate at the state level. And so we have people that are out there working with the United Way agencies, trying to find board opportunities, and then we can share them with the individuals who are have placed themselves in the database at the national level. And that information is presented to us and shared with us. And we can communicate with the individuals that are looking for board placement, what board opportunities are out there and create those matches. That's one of the things that's really important. We've got to work with individuals to find out what they're interested in. And so one of the things when we ask individuals to complete the database, a creative personal profile in the Nurses on Boards Coalition database, we ask questions. And so those questions are to enable us to help you find the right board if you want to be um, looked at and considered for certain organizations and certain kinds of boards. So that's one of the the strategic imperatives. A second one is creating an organization focused on transformative growth. I think it's fair to say that we're, we are pretty right on that one. This organization continues to grow. Um, we have gone from originally 21 organizations, we're now at 29. You know, we have strategic partners all across the country. You know, the numbers of organizations that have stepped up to the plate, like Western Governors, that says we support the work of the Nurses on Boards Coalition. We believe in this mission, too. And we think this is an excellent way that nurses can serve as leaders across our nation and in their own communities. So this is something that I think is exciting. You know, we are asked to speak. Um, the executive director is Lori Benson, and you'll have her contact information at the end of the the uh, presentation today and she and I were and our board work very closely with organizations across the country and we are asked to speak regularly I mean we don't go a month without three or four speaking opportunities at the national level or international level uh, moving this work forward and so it's great to be able to get that word out there and we know by the amount of invitations that we're getting and by the numbers that continue to increase on our um, database that we are truly creating a transformative um, organization. One of the things you know, that I, I failed to mention is that when we originally began our organization, we were um, gifted from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation almost $300,000 to kick this work off. So it was a grant that was provided to us to um, develop the program and, and move it forward. Since that time, we have um, been able to identify individuals and organizations, one of those being Western Governors, um, to be able to assist us with funding. And today, um, we are proud to say that we have to date raised over a million dollars for the purposes of moving this work forward and to create the programs and services that are needed to do this nationwide. So it's, it's really exciting to see how this has grown. The third one is promoting collaboration among states and national organizations to integrate strategies. You know, and as we said, our member organizations are the large organizations across the country for nursing and healthcare, and they have their national um, conferences. You know, they have newsletters that go out nationally to all of their members across the country. They have many ways that they um, can communicate work with their membership. And one of the things that they have been beautiful to do is to have a session or um, a speaker about nurses on boards at those conferences and to share information through their databases and their newsletters with all of their members at the national level. And in addition, you know, we have state work going on all the time. Also within the state organizations, the affiliates and chapters of those national organizations, it filters down to them and they're very busily doing the individual things within their state as well as the Nurses on Boards Coalition has actually created a state contact for all 50 states and the District of Columbia. So each one of our states and each state that you live in has an individual who stepped up the plate and said, I'll be the state contact for our state. And it's that person's responsibility to work with colleagues within that state and bring people to the table to help organize the efforts of the Nurses on Boards work at the state level. Many of those um, folks either are in one of the many member organizations, and they could be somebody who's representing the Nurses Association at the state level, or the State um, Center for Nursing, or the uh, League for Nursing, or the 
organization of nurse leaders. It, it's very different in each state, but it's wonderful that the Nurses on Boards Coalition database, when it is and people enter in their information into the database, that information, as long as they check yes, I want to receive more information about Nurses on Boards Coalition. And if you're new to us and you're going to do that, hopefully by the at the end of this um, webinar today, that you'll go in and enter your own information into that database that we'll tell you how to do in a little bit. When you do that, we want to make sure that you say, check at the end. I want to receive more information from nurses on boards. I promise you, you won't be inundated by things. But if you don't check that box, we won't be able to ever communicate with you. We'll have your information, but we won't be able to communicate back with you. So caution in that particular area. But the information that is there is sorted into states. And so the state contact, and for, I'm the state contact in Indiana, which obviously makes sense, that information is shared with the state contact for everybody that's in their state that currently serves on a board and what the board is and where it is and what it's about. And then also those who want to serve on a board but don't currently do that. And we also have a group of individuals that currently serve on boards but they want to serve on another board. So that information is shared at the state level with the state contact so that we can do the matches that are referred to uh, in the first um, imperative where we talked about uh, facilitating board placement. So there's a lot of opportunity to get folks involved and, and it all starts with making sure that your information is in our Nurses on Boards Coalition database. The fourth um, imperative is demonstrating the impact of nurses on boards. You know, we all have these wonderful stories, you know, of impact. And, and my, one of my very favorite stories is a staff nurse at the staff nurse level, a male um, father um, in a community, was um, somewhat interested in getting involved, but a little shaky, didn't know for sure if it was what he wanted to do at the time. And as the story goes, his wife talked him into joining the board of the um, baseball league for youth sports in the community. And that particular person, though he was not real comfortable walking in, became very comfortable very quickly, sharing his concern about some of the safety issues that they had with this baseball league, this community baseball league. And so as it is, this is true, within three months of this person's service on this board, the nurse, they had changed their helmets to safer helmets and they had more of them so that they weren't passing, you know, the helmets and head lice from player to player to player, as you can imagine. And they also changed their bats to safer bats that didn't break as easily and fly off into the wind and the um, people who were watching the game and the players. And they also um, created the opportunity to have an AED on site for every game. And for somebody who's a grandparent who gets very excited at my kids' game, my grandkids' games, I think that's a wonderful idea. And so I, it's a very clear to me that that creates a culture of health in that community. Those are major changes within the safety of that particular community within that baseball league. And that would not have happened if the staff nurse registered nurse, young millennial had not gone on to that board. And so we often think, you know, that board service is hospital boards or, you know, great big, you know, 501c3 um, or, or fortune 500 companies, you know, where they pay somebody to serve on their board. Well, yes, those are opportunities. They're not as plentiful, uh, but those are opportunities. But there are so many opportunities at the state and at the local community level for nurses to serve on not-for-profit boards. You know, we're talking about things like the neighborhood association or places of faith and worship and your church, your place of worship, your PTA, you know, the, an organization that's raising money for pediatric cancer or the Humane Society or anything like that. Those are absolutely places where decisions are made by those boards that reflect and change the culture of health of our communities. And we need the voice of nursing at all of those tables. So in order to really look at the impact of that, it's, it's become a little, it's a little harder than we think. And some of you may be nurse researchers, and we are very pleased and proud to have several wonderful nurse researchers involved in this particular aspect of our work. So we have an impact work group that is really looking at research on how do we prove it 
you know, we have these wonderful stories like I just shared, and we, we ask nurses to share their story and share their testimonial on our website. And we're going to ask you to do that as well if you serve on the board. But those are all anecdotal. You know, they're, they're qualitative. And so we're trying to figure out the absolute best way that we can actually prove by data that having the nursing voice at the table truly makes a difference. And so we're excited um, to move this work forward. This will just be the first of what we think will be many studies to be able to do that. But, you know, it's interesting when we, we know that there are nurses there, the nurse brought this particular data or this particular um, story and data, which is the best way to do it, to the table. And a decision was made in a positive way that reflects a change in the culture of health. It, it, it's hard to prove that that was done, that decision was made only because the nurse brought that, but we are determined we're gonna find a way. You know, We believe that executive directors and board chairs of organizations can clarify that. They can say, indeed, this decision would not have been made you know, without that particular nurse. So how we quantify that is yet to be seen, but we're starting on it and we're really excited about finding a way that we can actually provide data that will prove what we're doing is important work. And the last but not least is developing member synergy and strategy um, and value for all of our members. So as I said, we have 29 member organization. It's important that they be involved and that they um, are a part of everything that we do and that positive comes back to their organizations from all of the time and the, and the resources that they commit to the Nurses on Boards Coalition. And the same with our funders and our sponsors. It's important to us that they get as much out of it as they give or more, because that's the only way that we're all going to be successful. Next thing I want to share a little bit about is our website. And our Nurses on Boards Coalition website is nurses um, on boards coalition.org, and that'll be on the next slide. But if you go to that website, there are a tremendous amount of resources available to you there. All for, you know, they're free. There are some offerings that you would have to go um, into um, something and, and pay for, but you don't have to pick those. There are lots and lots of free offerings available to you. We have all the overview documents that explain all the details of the Nurses on Boards Coalition, you know, how we became from just this beginning struggling organization funded by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation um, dollars to, you know, an independent entity. We are a business entity. We are our own 501c3 now. You know, we have paid time, two full-time paid staff. It's been um, a tremendous um, opportunity to see the Nurse on Boards Coalition grow to what it's become today. And all of that information is available on our website. Also, um, as I said, educational offerings available to you. There are board readiness tools. If you're not sure exactly if you're ready or at what level you're ready, um, these tools are available to you to ascertain if and which board's right for you. Um, and are you prepared today in the way that you'd like to be? And if not, how we can help you achieve competencies or build on competencies that you don't feel are quite as strong as you'd like for them to be today. Um, there's a mock video, um, a video, mock board meeting video there. So you can watch a board. Maybe you've never attended a board meeting um, in any way. And it's kind of scary to think about joining a board when you've never seen or watched a board meeting. I can tell you there's, there's one there. You can also Google them on YouTube. You can find some really good ones that were very well organized. And you can find some that you can probably find some things that ought to be changed if you were on that board. And so it's important um, to get that opportunity for people to examine what's out there and what you'd actually be getting into if you join a board. There are links to member and partner organizations there. Um, there's a get on board process tool that's there for you um, and for you to utilize. And then lots of nurse stories of board service um, are on our website and so many, many more things are there. You know, and I think in addition to the great resources that we have available on the NOBC website, I can't overemphasize um, the help that mentors bring. And though our board, our website doesn't really provide that today, your community does and your school does, your alma mater does. You know, there are people in your world that currently or previously have served on boards and you can learn so much from them. So I encourage you so strongly to pick up one of those individuals and talk to them, pull them under your wing or let them pull you under under their wing and learn from them. You know, when we talk about nurses competencies, one of the things that sometimes nurses think they're not really 
the expert at is finances. And then people kind of balk at that a little bit. But, you know, I believe strongly that we all as adults, um, we handle our own personal finances. You know, and, and the secret to finances is you got to have more coming in than you got going out or you're going to get in trouble. And that's no different with a board. And so the finances of a board, you know, they may look a little different and they're a profit and loss sheets or the documentation that they share with the board, but you can learn that. And that's a perfect example of what a mentor can share with you. They can walk you through that and so that it makes total sense to you. You know, and I would encourage people to think you don't have to be an expert in every competency in order to be a positive, successful member of a board. You bring so much to the table that others don't. Let those finance people be the experts. You know, let the bankers be the experts in where money should be invested and how it should be invested. That's not necessarily what we bring to the table that's more important. Maybe more important that we can bring to the table cultural competency and making sure that people are treated well in our communities and making sure that there aren't food deserts or that, you know, pets are vaccinated or whatever the case may be. Nurses bring that particular skills and those skills to the table when others don't. So never be afraid to ask someone for help. You know, I encourage you to, to find a mentor or be a mentor at whichever level you are at this particular time in your career. So we might ask, what can you do now? You know, and, and that's what I always ask. I'm sitting, I listen to somebody talk and pontificate like it probably seems I'm doing right now. But I think you can hopefully tell that I have a passion for this and I truly believe in this. And I think that each and every one of us can make a huge difference in the communities that we serve and improving the health of our communities. And so if we think about what you can do, I beg you to step up and be counted. If you serve on a board now, let us know that. Let us count the boards that you serve towards that 10,000. You know, we want to know that. It's important that we do that. The Nurses on Boards Coalition website is there, nursesonboardscoalition.org. Encourage you to go to that. And when you do, you will see that it'll ask you, um, there'll be two buttons, a red button and a, and a green. I think they're red and green at the top of my head. Um, but the, you push on the button that says, yes, I serve and I want to be counted. And when you do that, it will take you into the database and there will be required fields like your name and your address and what you do, where you work um, and your interests. There are also um, some re fields in there that are not required, one of which is your political affiliation. And I would say, share that with you, not that it would frighten you and you would think, what do they care about my political affiliation? And so I and always want to share that that's not a required field. However, if you have aspirations to serve on state appointed boards um, or commissions at the state level, most of those boards at the state level are filled by X amount of people who claim to be Democratic uh, and X amount of people who claim to be Republican and X amount of people who claim to be independent. And so your ability to get on one of those kinds of boards may very well make a difference by which particular political party that you um, say that you you share the values of. And so again, it's not a required field. You can just skip it and go over it if you would like to. But it's important that you share the information that will allow us to get back in touch with you to help you match up with boards um, that you would like to serve on perhaps in the future. Another thing we'd encourage you to do is encourage your colleagues to register. You know, I I'm talking with all of you today, and I'm gonna answer your questions hopefully here in just a few minutes. But also if you could share this information with your colleagues, just when you talk, I know we're all pretty nurse centric. We, you know, we hang out with nurses, you know, our friends are nurses, we work with nurses, you know, even my, my daughter's a nurse, you know, all my friends. We all are become a bit too nurse centric sometimes. So I would encourage you when you're in those meetings and when you're having dinner or you're out for cocktails with your nurse colleagues, Encourage them to register themselves in the Nurses on Board's website and share their information as well and let us communicate with them and let us count this, the board that they serve on. Another one is sharing your story. Um, on our website, we have the ability to share the story, share the story of how you got to a board and the intrinsic value that you get out of that and the difference that you've made by bringing your voice to that particular table of that organization. You can also contact a local nonprofit or another organization um, to see would they be willing um, to share that information um, with they, within their board to maybe perhaps 
like to have a nurse come onto their board. And I can tell you from our experience in Indiana, working with the United Way, they have been a tremendous partner. Their board, so many of the not-for-profit um, United Way agencies in our area, they kind of struggle for board members. They don't often have a full board and they almost always have seats open. They are thrilled to have the thought of a nurse, a well-educated you know, nurse at any level, come on to their board to share um, the expertise and to be able to bring what they bring to the table and to help make the decisions at that board table. So if you know organizations, encourage them to bring a, a nurse onto their board. And then also engaging in your state, um, whatever state you live in. And if I, we can tell you if you want to contact us, our information is at the end and you want to know who's the state contact in my state. Certainly, we can find that. We, we have that list and we can provide that information to you to connect you with the state contact in the state in which you live and work. You know, if you're, like I said, if you're Indiana, it's me and my information is at the end and I'm happy to help. And I know all of our state contacts would be very help, happy to help you along the way. And the last one is making a contribution or encouraging others to do likewise. There's a button on our website that allows people to um, share information um, and, and if they want to share a financial support, they can do that as well. So there's a, a donate to us opportunity on our website if it should be something that you would be interested in doing. So as we bring this section of the webinar to a close, I just really want to thank you. I want to thank you um, for everything that you do every single day in your communities and across our nation. Nurses are very strong individuals. I've never been prouder in my life to be a nurse. And as you saw, uh, heard from my uh, bio, I've been one for a very long time. And I am delighted to, you know, be in the senior days of my career and to have the ability to work so closely with such wonderful individuals as the folks that I work with on the Nurses on Boards Coalition. We are here to help you. We want to mentor you. We want to provide anything that we can to help you on your journey, not only to the boardroom, but beyond, you know, and as I think about the work that we've done in this initiative, we have brought people to the boardroom and we've also brought them beyond the boardroom because it's not always about where you serve um, or what organization you're involved with. It's what you learn and it's what you bring to the table. And nurses have that intrinsic ability to bring chaos, you know, turn chaos into something that's well planned or to use the strategic planning process or the, the nursing process to work people through issues. And we can come, we can get consensus so often from with nurses that are not, it just doesn't happen when a nurse isn't at the table. So I encourage you to really think about this, um, get involved if you can. Again, remember to register yourself in our NOBC database on our website, I encourage your colleagues and friends to do the same. Our contact information is here on this screen. Um, I'm Kimberly Harper, um, as um, Molly shared, and um, Lori Benson is our executive director. Her information follows that, and I think she's listening on this call today. And if you were interested, um, if you go to the bottom row, I am the third from the left in the black dress with the long strand of pearls. That's Kimberly Harper. And two over from me in the black jacket and the white glass, going to the right, is Lori Benson. And she's our executive director. And we are surrounded by member representatives of our organizations that are members of the Nurses on Boards. And on behalf of all of them, I thank you for your personal commitment. I thank you for everything that you do for the health of our communities across our nation. And please know that we're here to help you in any, any way that we can. Thank you so much, Kim, for taking the time to share that great information with us. Now we'd like to open it up for Q&A. If you have questions, please type them into the chat box now. <laughs> 